HTC launched a brand new Mana Quest Pro competitor, the XR Elite. I am fortunate enough to be among the first creators to do in-depth testing. If you plan to purchase the Vi XR Elite, this is the must-watch video for you in VR. As you see here, we have Kitty read the small test on her badges using the yeah. RGB path yeah. This is amazing. It's my name. She can easily do that. She now in the internal Notre Dame cinematic VR experience. The higher resolution game is streaming wirelessly into her XR Elite using Wi-Fi 6E from the little laptop on her left. With or without a USB-C cable, XR Elite can play PC VR content from Viport and Steam VR with zero latency, which is extremely impressive. We then tested out the mixed reality gameplay with the new title Yuki, a fun MR game that fully utilized the latest tracking, a new full color path to RGB cameras, and the once and only depth sensor something MetaQuest Pro fails to include. Having a very responsive and accurate depth sensing system transformed intensive action-packed gameplay in real physical environments into a whole new level. Something that you just have to try it yourself to feel the differences. I have the MetaQuest Pro and also tried the Pico Neo 4 MR. This is by far the best mixed reality experience I have ever tried it with zero motion sickness. Before we even jump into the specs and in-depth review, let's watch me play Yuki live to walk you through some of my initial thoughts. Uh, if you're a competitive VR gamer, uh, the mixed reality path to quality is very important for playing a VR game, I think. Uh, and actually, the accuracy of the pointer to the subject is, oh my god, I'm being swarmed by enemy. Uh, it's, it's, it's really good. And you see like, the character Yokio right there? Uh, she is very real. Like, I, look, look around her, you see it? Oh, you can't really see it, but I can see it. it look really real in my hand. And she's like stuck into my controller. Uh, like, well, I should really wear the hand strap. Uh, but it's stuck into my controller, and it looked really real, and, and it's a reality right there. Oh, big guy. So I can tell you why now, uh, but I'll be slow. Uh, it's a really entire different gaming experience when you see reality, when you see Kitty filming me. Uh, when, you, when you really like playing a game, but feel like that you're actually playing a game in your room, give you a very different perspective of video game. Uh, and I think this is a better way to play for non-gamer, to really get an MR immersed into an environment. But at the same time, playing a video game and have fun, and your friend can film you, uh, and you know your friend filming you, and you don't walk into the camera. Uh, it's also a safety issue, right? Uh, because it's so high quality, uh, you see your environment, you know where you are moving around, do not being attacked, but you're not like hitting to the camera, hitting to your friends, hitting to the wall, like the wall's right here, you're not hitting to the wall. Uh, you know your boundary, it's not a boundary issue, like normal safety issue in playing VR game. Uh, that makes you like uh, more aware of your environment. And also, if I look at the screen, you don't see that you know, OBS screencast screen door effects. Wonderful screen, right? Uh, so they actually handle screen really well. This is crazy. And the only thing we see to be buried, when I move my hand, see the guy? When I move my hand, uh, they have some like wobble effects uh, on the camera because I'm blocking the camera. So see now I'm blocking the camera. Uh, this hand's fine, but when I'm blocking the camera, it does this little bit of like uh, wobble effects. Uh, but that's the only downside. But again, it's a camera checking me, it's all right. If you're blocking the camera, it's not gonna check. Look at that guy. Uh, it's not gonna track anymore. And the environment, the environment just turned black. Look at that. So it's checking with the front camera right there. Like. Now to me, it's all black. You can see the screen there. It's all black. You don't see anything because I'm blocking the camera. So, so when you move around in front of uh, your camera, the checking lost. And now they actually really smartly put an actual VR experience inside the MR. The universe up there, oh my god, up there is like kind of come down to me, and that is very trippy. The environment is 3D, my environment is 3D, uh, when they mix together, 
it actually works. I mean, you don't see that kind of like really merging yet uh, in any pass-through MR headset. Um, only this one. So that is very impressive. Uh oh. I think the battery just died. I literally killed the headset and the battery. But guys, this is next level. I think the, the MR experience is so much better than the Oculus Quest Pro. With the path through quality is so much better. Uh, and I'm very looking forward to really get an uh, actual headset on hand to really review for you guys for uh, MR experience, for enterprise usage, for all kind of usage. Yeah. We are here at the Vine showroom, and here uh, with me, we have Thomas right here. And Thomas, can you tell us a little bit about this whole space and yeah, what you're launching? So today we are launching the um, HTC Vive XR Elite. Mm -hmm. um, it's our most ambitious, most versatile VR headset mm -hmm. to date. Nice. The name is XR Elite. So XR give you a Elite. little hint, yeah? It's not just VR. It does VR in the way you'd expect from HTC, mm -hmm. with super high quality in the tracking, the visual um, clarity, uh, as well as mixed reality. Nice. So let's talk about the tracking. Like, is there any improvement tracking compared this one to Focus? We've taken the exact same tracking of Focus 3 mm -hmm. and been able to include this uh, in the Vive XR Elite. We've got four wide field of view cameras to do the tracking. Mm -hmm. For the first one, what you'll see from us on this product. Let's show the camera right there. Yeah, sure. So we've got the four cameras, two on the side and two at the front mm -hmm. for the tracking, as well as a full color pass through RGB camera and a depth sensor depth for sensor. room mapping oh. uh, for your mixed reality experiences. That's, that's very unique because Oculus Quest Pro does not have depth sensor. You take that out. Yeah. Uh, what is this? Is it a fence? Uh, yeah, so we've got active cooling on the product. Nice. Um, we've been working with uh, Qualcomm and integrating their chipset for a little while now. Yeah. Uh, the work we've done on the Focus 3 was phenomenal in terms of thermal management. Yeah. And we've got some little tweaks and uh, magic sauce that we use to manage heat and thermal on the product. So it always runs at full capacity. Nice. Uh, we've got 12 gig of RAM, so we've got a Qualcomm XR2 chipset on this one. XR2 or XR2 Plus? XR2. Got it. Do you know the difference between the two? No idea. Okay, XR2 Plus is really just the XR2 chipset that they split in half with the system on the chip on one side and the management on the memory on another side. Mm -hmm. Reason why people do it is some ODMs cannot manage their thermals properly. Mm -hmm. We can because we've been doing this for so long. So there's no need for us to use this XR2 Plus, which is basically a spin off of the XR2. So from a performance perspective, there's no need for us to Got go down it. the path of the XR2 Plus, which is pretty much just a marketing thing. Got it. Oh, interesting to know. Uh, so tell me about the pass-through. So you say it's a full color pass-through. Yes. So is it the camera and a depth sensor work together to That's get right. an image? Yeah, yeah. So we use the camera and the depth sensor for um, spatial accuracy in the 3D mapping of the environment, which means that when you put on the headset, turn on the mixed reality experiences, when you know that you've got a piece of furniture or a chair, at arm's length in the real world, mm -hmm. it will translate very accurately in your oh. mixed reality world. And we pair that and we couple that with the uh, four wide field of view uh, tracking modules so to map your VR it's, it's and right MR here, together. Right? Yes. Right here, okay, I want to show the camera light. Sure. Oh, let's oh, come let's remove, let's remove the gasket, gasket. we don't need that for now. So it's just one right here, one right here, one right here, and one right here. That's right. Four tracker. When I see the inside, it's interesting. You guys have this like little ring, ring dial right here. Do you know what it is? Tell me about it. Okay. I don't know. And you wear glasses, right? So yes. We've gotten to a point where we want our headsets to be as inclusive as possible. Mm -hmm. And we need to cater for a whole bunch of different people from people with large faces, smaller faces, mm -hmm. people with different face geometries, people with glasses, people mm -hmm. that wear specs. Um, and for the first time ever, we have the ability for you to find your sweet spot super easily. First, first off, we've got an IPD slider at the bottom of the headset mm -hmm. that allows you to find mm -hmm. the right spacing between your eye. Mm -hmm. Then if you've got glasses, you can put them away. And if you know your specs, you go and turn the dial on each of the lenses there and you can adjust it to your eyesight. So I know eyesight. I'm minus two on my 
left eye and uh -huh. I minus three on my right eye. Uh -huh. So all I need to do is set up the IPD. Mm -hmm. I'm 67 mil. That's the spacing between my eyes. Minus two on the left eye, minus three on the right eye. Mm -hmm. And all I need to do is put the gasket back on and off I go. Nice. Okay, and uh, what you realize is that just a quick turn of, of the dial at the back, uh -huh. and I've got this really nice snuggle fit. Yeah. The product doesn't move on my head whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and I know here I'm in VR, but if I want to feel like I'm seamlessly connected with my physical world, mm -hmm. that's where mixed reality becomes very, very interesting. And you know, some use cases are coming up from the developer community that we haven't been able to even think about the potential and nice. tap into it uh, today. What's the IPD distance? Like the, the range of the IPD distance? I'll be telling you 53 to 72 mil, but let's uh, confirm that one offline. 57 to 72 maybe. Got it. Yeah, that's the, tr the traditional range. Um, and again, what I think is great for our users is that you can set up your IPD whilst you're in VR. Let's talk about um, facial tracking and eye tracking. Yeah, what do you want to know about it? Uh, your launch commercial have this nose gag you, right here. You're one of the only ones that picked that up. That's great. Okay, yeah. Okay, so we're not um, we're not launching the XR Elite with built-in eye or face tracking, and there's a few reasons behind that: battery efficiency, additional cost, and the fact that some people start to worry a little bit about what are you guys spying on when you track my eye or when you track my facial expressions. Got it. Plus. Is the market mature enough in the consumer world to justify eye tracking and, and face tracking? Mm -hmm. Probably not. However, if you feel like you need it, we will launch a all-in-one module that does both eyes and face uh, later in the year. Is your is this your own eye face tracking or is it Toby eye it's, tracking? No, no, it's 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 our own. Um, nice eye tracking. We have done a lot of work on the eye tracking for the Focus Three. Yeah. So moving from the built-in um, module that you know in the Pro Eye to a modular version of the eye tracking with our own solution on the Focus Rate and using something very similar when it comes out later in 2023 for the Vive XR Elite. Nice. I also see the spec commercial, like you can take this apart, yeah. turn it into cool glasses. Tell me a little bit more about the thought process, about the design and why is that? So the thought process is Back to the point I was making before, we want that uh, XR community to be as inclusive and diverse as possible. So not everybody wants to have a battery at the back of the head. There's a battery right there. So that's the battery at the back. The mm -hmm. beauty, and that was one of the biggest features on the Focus 3, removable battery. Who thought that removable battery would be receiving so much praise um, in, the, in the VR business? Reality, it does. Should it be only for uh, commercial users? Probably not. So we've got now a removable battery at the back of this consumer headset. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you do a little click to the sides, remove the battery, thank you very much. You can turn this into a pair of glasses. So oh, from a headset that wears is, oh, nice. 625 grams with the battery, which mm -hmm. is 100 grams lighter than anything else you'd find in the market, mm -hmm. we drop it down to 250 odd grams mm -hmm. in the glasses configuration. So these um, temple pad extensions come in the box, oh. all right, so as part of the kit, you get now the flexibility and the versatility of using it as a full-on VR headset or a lightweight pair of glasses that will deliver the exact same experience that what you get on the XR Elite full kit, um, but obviously in a much more lightweight uh, where's the configuration. The, where's the power come from then? If without power the could go anywhere. So from that USB-C uh, port on the side. So it's not plugged to the phone. It's not like your other headset plugged to the phone, uh, but actually this is just a power delivery. Power delivery. Um, Airplane seats, right? You'd be sitting, kicking your feet up, connect to the um, to the USB port um, on the on the armrest, connect to a power bank. Any power bank these days would very likely uh, do the job, and therefore battery life becomes no unlimited. Yeah, that's that's, a, that's awesome. another way for us to move and remove these you know barriers and. Uh, potential challenges that customers and consumers might come across when it comes to power management. Nice. One thing I forgot to ask is the I, the PPD and field of view. Field of view is 110 degrees. 110. At 19 PPD. 19 PPD. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Which is, you know, 
up there with you know the best best products in the market. Yes. Uh, last question is: What is availability? When people can expect to get one? Is it a consumer so or enterprise product? If you want to pre-order the Vive XR Elite, you can mm -hmm. do it now um, on Vive.com and with selected uh, retailer partners and resellers. Yeah. And we will start shipping at the end of Feb. So we're talking only just a few weeks away. Mm -hmm. uh, the Vive XR Elite full kit comes with um, the battery cradle, the headset, the gasket obviously, mm -hmm. a pair of controllers. Mm -hmm. Controllers are obviously um, something that we've been working very, very hard yeah. on. Basically, they're the Focus 3 controllers. These controllers have Got hours it. of usage mm -hmm. in real life environment, high foot traffic areas. Mm -hmm. Uh, feedback we've received on them in terms of design, in terms of buttons layout, in terms of usability, in terms of battery life, um, has been absolutely phenomenal. So the Focus 3 controllers become HTC Vive controllers and they work now with the XR Elite, which also means that products like the HTC Vive wrist tracker that takes the six of tracking yes. from your controllers to your wrist is going to work with um, the Vive XR Elite. And you've got a really good example here in that demo we've got yep. going there with the kayak where you yep. paddle, you've got wrist tracking actually on the actual paddle and that becomes such a much more immersive experience on the, nice. on the XR Elite. So about audio, do you guys have ambisonic audio? What, where does the audio microphone come from? So the obviously built-in mic and built-in audio, we've got um, open back speakers on the, uh, in the arms of the, of the headset. Uh -huh. uh, the challenge on this is to, was, because we've obviously solved it, to move the speakers as far down as possible, down the branches, so it actually goes above your ears, whilst delivering a level of environmental awareness, yeah. so you can still hear what's going on around you, specifically when you're in an MR environment, where it makes sense for all your senses to be physically connected to the room, yes. whether it's what you see or what you hear. Now, if you want to use a third-party accessory and get to the next level of immersion, like uh -huh. watching a movie on a plane, for example, or in the train, it's up to you and you can actually connect in you know, a Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth headphones if you, if you feel like it. Right. Um, but look how beautiful they are when you fold them away like this. Oh. Uh, and this nice little pair of glasses. And if you travel back in time to 2016 um, and you look at how much more compact yet uh, more powerful we've, we've come. Uh, yeah, it's an, an, another big breakthrough moment uh, yeah. for, for HTC Vive and for nice. our community. Uh, last question. Do you know the video resolution maximum this headset can play? Like, let's say that we have a 360 video in 8K, 4K, 5K. Do you so know very percent? likely 4K because we deliver 2K per eye. Mm -hmm. But obviously, there's a lot of work going on in the industry at the moment to always optimize and find the best bit rate, encoding, and mm -hmm. resolution to deliver the best experience. So whether mm -hmm. you're sh shooting stereo, mono, 180, 360, mm -hmm. flat, um, it would be up to our partners and developers to fine tune the content uh, to deliver the best possible visual uh, fidelity on the product. The beauty of this is that with the right encoding and with the right uh, file format, mm -hmm. there's virtually no screen door effect anymore. We oh, use wow. our pancake lenses, we use... Oh, the pancake lens. Yeah, yeah the that's right. Well, that's the, the only way to go that, that small in, in terms right. of uh, form factor. Nice. Um, as well as custom uh, LCD panels. Uh, with it, a wide field of view, 90 hertz. Do you have the i4 VAT eye tracking or the LED backlit? So, no. But with eye tracking comes a whole bunch of opportunities down the track if you want to do for VAT rendering. Mm -hmm. That's where, and you know exactly what we're looking at doing here. It's not mm -hmm. just about using it to do gaze control, mm -hmm. but for VAT rendering is obviously the next big thing in the gaming industry and in the video industry to make sure that we always deliver the sharpest resolution mm -hmm. at the center of what you're looking at and obviously to deliver the most immersive a natural experience in your VR headset. Nice. So you guys do have plan to like put in eye tracking and do for really random for development. Yeah, we do. Nice. Awesome. Thank you so much. So I think that's all my questions. Thank you well, so good, much, man. Thomas. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. Have fun. Yeah. Enjoy the demos and um, yeah, all good. Thank you.